Hi guys, today I'm with Peter Lee, an award-winning fine art architectural photographer, and we are at the beautiful church, and he's going to be showing us how he takes vertoramas. Um, so Peter, before we, we get into you doing your thing, what are vertoramas, and how did you get into that? Uh, it was an accident for me, because I didn't even know what it was at the time, mm. uh, but I was basically doing multiple shots. With a uh, with a sort of a, a 35 or 50 mil lens I, I use, and later on adapting the same kind of way of shooting, mm -hmm. and then bring it into something like a 14 mil or 10 mil, and realizing actually, yeah, this is something quite interesting to see. Great, and a lot of yeah. your work features churches. Um, yeah. What what piqued your interest into photographing churches? I suppose churches are. Because I'm originally from Hong Kong, mm -hmm. so you know, these buildings, we don't really get them. I mean, we have churches, but not to the level of detail that we have them built in this country. Mm -hmm. They are beautiful from whichever angle you look at, especially the lookups. Mm -hmm. And that you know, they provide something that modern architecture uh, with, with, with glass and metal that does not do. You know, they, they don't, they don't, you know, it's so different. Yeah. And they're so timeless as well. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I, we're here to know the process. So I want to know what's yeah. in your kit bag? What's your favorite lens? Oh, okay. What are you using yeah. to shoot these amazing photos? Um, so there are a few. As, uh, nowadays, I, I, I enjoy using the 14 to 24 a lot. So mostly on the 14. But 24 as well, as, as, um, uh, if I step back a little bit further mm -hmm. and take a couple or three shots, mm -hmm. and then we can actually keep all the verticals straight. For, for panorama, so it looks a little bit like tilt shift, but you get more megapixels. Okay. And then on the other one that I use is a 10 millimeter. Okay. But some people use fisheye as well, and that works as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the wider you get, that means like the, if I would have done it on a 14, then the final virtuama that is a 180 degrees panorama, mm -hmm. you will be much more long the tile. Mm -hmm. But just the nature of the work that I do, and I want to be able to print them sort of a four by a five by seven dimension. So I needed something a little bit wider. So a fisheye or a 10 millimeter or you know, that, that is the ideal setting for me. Okay. So talking about kit, what camera yeah. are you using to shoot Rotoramas? Uh, so now I'm using the Z8 to shoot Rotoramas. Uh, it's great because of the way that it allows me to bracket. So I can be one stop, you can be 1.3 stops, you can be 1.7 stops. Uh, so it makes it a bit that much flexible for me when it, when 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 lighting conditions are difficult. Uh, it's absolutely you know, fantastic allowing me to do that. Yeah. And I just want to ask, how many yeah. pictures uh, do you end up with from a shoot? Um, for one set, is about thirty-five to forty-five shots. Okay. And then if it's actually if there is people around, mm -hmm. then I have to wait for someone to get out take a shot of someone sitting there, I wait for them to get off the seat and take another shot. So those additional slides would sort of go into the whole set as well to, to blend in, to, to create a completely empty scene. Okay. We're going to watch you as you work yeah. and go through your workflow. Yeah. And I hope people enjoy that. It locks it now. Yeah. This is a Falcon F38 mount. Um, so what this does, this ring allows us to adjust the, uh, the orientation without taking it off the off the mount. So now it allows the 180 degrees or well, 360 degrees motion. So that's the the core setup. Yeah. So that's that that's that's more balanced. You've got the leg right underneath it hang the bag on here. So the next bit is to finding the center of the, the space. So what the, the main thing we need to do now is to find from here the center point pointing that way, but we also need to be perfectly centered looking up so that we get a, we get a symmetry. So we try to align it with one of the pillars or one of the center of the arch. Two backs. I'm going to move forward a little bit. This is the center underneath these two pillars. Um, so now I just need to check again the middle. So it takes a few it takes a few tries getting it getting it right. So you can see like this this building is built 
pretty perfectly symmetrical. Just double check again. It keeps nudging. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the reason I use this tripod is uh, for a couple of reasons. One is really light, uh, so I can carry it anywhere. If it, even if I carry it for a whole day, it's about about a kilo, so it's, it's, it's less than including the tripod head as well. And also the second thing is it's is, is built in with a reverse ball head. So usually they have the spinning mount which is on the base, but this one you can see this is on the top, so, the, so it allows me to to turn the head sideways and then spin the 360. So that's that's the key for Virtuaramas. You need to have a head that does that. So it's all built in into one one small tripod, which is very handy for me. Um, so I'm, I'm just getting the levels right. The trouble with Virtuaramas, if you don't line it straight, then it will continue the rest of the image. So it's just whatever your slight error is, it exaggerates for the rest of the image. So sometimes we get them tilting sideways if it wasn't lined up properly. So make sure you use the, um, the levels and also the grids to, to help you with, with, with lining up the, the image. It's flashing a little bit, but that's all right. It's just that sensitive in terms of how the, how the leveling. Today it's pretty cloudy outside, so that you can see the stained glass windows. You can, you know, there's no, uh, you know, there's no extreme lights, so we can do away with less bracketing. But if it's a really sunny day, then we will bracket more. So I would usually do five brackets anyways, because you you have a lot of dark places in here, even though you know the room, the the, the lights are on. Um, we still have a lot of dark, shadowy areas that we might want to pick up some of the details out. So I would generally do a plus two, minus two stops, and we'll take take five shots. Then we get the ISO back to 100. So you want you want the lowest shot to be like the the far the, the the slower shutter speed to capture the details of the window. So we don't want to lose that. So make sure we have that as the as the base. So everything else is dark, and then we can do four more shots that have a, a brighter. So when you take the pictures, it's important to either set a two seconds timer or use a trigger remote if you can. By pressing a button, we are introducing some, you know, some movement to the camera, and usually it takes about a second to dampen any shake. It's a quite a wide angle, so it's, it's not like we're shooting a, a 800 or 400 mil. The, the shutter doesn't have that much of an effect. It does, however, on the wide angle sides, because we are exaggerating, like the, the things that are close to us are closer. It will, especially on the edges, be a bit blurry. So it's better to, to shoot in silent if you can, if you can. But also be aware that um, if, if there are lights, make sure that you, know, you have a setting that it doesn't cause any flicker. Yeah. Five stops, one of each stop. Yeah, so the windows are intact. Bracketing allows you to capture everything uh, from light to dark, where a single shot does not, is not able to capture. So by putting it all together, you're able to, to have everything from the darkest areas under the chairs and also everything on the window as well. So everything from there to the sides where these are. So by combining all the bracketed shots, you will get an entire image without anything overexposed. Each set we want to overlap by about a third, so that when we put it in the software, they recognize which, which part goes with what. There we go. So in the end, is here, with all these shots put together.
What tips would you give to someone looking to get into architectural photography? Be more aware of the lighting, mm -hmm. how, well, how it presents itself, because they you know, every bit of light that goes on to the surfaces actually draws your eyes in. So be a bit more mindful with you know, what you want to capture and also the focal lengths as well and how high you put the camera. You know, sometimes you want to emphasize a bit more on the floor tiles can be very, very extravagant and you want to emphasize that, then maybe you can bring it a bit lower. We can direct what you want to show on the image by adjusting the height of the camera as well as the focal length. I mean, for stuff that isn't a client project, like if it's like, for, for me, churches is, is my own sort of passion, mm -hmm. photographing these. So the time is irrelevant, how much I spend on it. <laughs> Master it mm -hmm. as much as I can with the image, regardless of the time, like until I get it done now, so I'll, to the point. So, so yes, yeah, so each image would take about 40 hours to do. 40 hours? For each of the, so, so once you do the panorama, mm -hmm. And you put a stitch together, mm -hmm. then I take about it takes about forty hours, roughly forty hours to to complete the whole thing, but not in one go. Obviously, okay. you pat it over a month, and you spend a few hours here and there. But then there are errors that is going to induce by flipping so many images together. Mm -hmm. So we need to go in and fix all the little errors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in terms of the the um, the tips, I I think just spend like don't rush it. You know, spend the time to 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 get it right, and and you know it's difficult sometimes, and it only gets easier when you when you get it right. You know, it, it's, the practice makes it perfect. So, well, I hope yeah. you will inspire more people, just as you've inspired me today to start thinking more creatively <laughs> and seeing light differently. I mean, watching you do the process of taking those photos um, has been a learning experience. I hope others learn from from seeing you work and see your process. Thank you so much for watching, but if you do want to see Peter Lee's work, where can they see that? Uh, they can go to my website, mm -hmm. uh, www.plipictures.com, mm -hmm. and also on my Instagram, which is uh, at plee.panda. Okay. Yeah. Great, you heard the man, you've seen the work, you've seen the process, I hope you get inspired. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you guys in the next video.